In the last few videos, we talked about stochastic gradient descent and, you know, other variations of the stochastic gradient descent algorithm, including this adaptation to online learning. But uh, all of those algorithms could be run on one machine, or could be run on one computer. And some machine learning problems are just too big to run on one machine. And sometimes maybe you just have so much data, you just don't ever want to run all that data through a single computer, no matter what algorithm you want to use on that computer. So in this video, I'd like to talk about a different approach to large-scale machine learning called the MapReduce approach. And um, even though we had quite a few videos on stochastic gradient descent and uh, going to spend relatively less time on MapReduce, don't judge the relative importance of MapReduce versus stochastic gradient descent based on the amount of time I spend on these ideas. In particular, many people will say that uh, MapReduce is at least an equally important and some will say an even more important idea compared to stochastic gradient descent, only it uh, is relatively simpler to explain, which is why I'm going to spend less time on it. But using these ideas, you might be able to scale learning algorithms to even far larger problems than is possible using stochastic gradient descent. Here's the idea. Let's say we want to fit a uh, linear regression model or a logistic regression model or some such. And let's start the game with batch gradient descent. So that's our batch gradient descent learning rule. And to keep the writing on this slide tractable, I'm going to assume throughout that we have m equals 400 examples. Of course, by our standards, in terms of large-scale machine learning, you know, m might be pretty small, and so this might be more uh, commonly applied to problems where you have maybe closer to 400 million examples or some such. But just to make the writing on this slide simpler, I'm going to pretend we have 400 examples. So in that case, uh, the batch gradient descent learning rule has this, you know, 1 over 400 and the sum from i equals 1 through 400, through my 400 examples here. And if m is large, then this is a computationally expensive step. So what the MapReduce idea does is the following. And I should say, the MapReduce idea is due to uh, two uh, researchers Jeff Dean and uh, Sanjay Gamawat. Jeff Dean, by the way, is uh, sort of one of the most legendary engineers in all of Silicon Valley, and he kind of uh, built a large fraction of the architecture or the infrastructure that all of Google runs on today. Um, but here's the MapReduce idea. So let's say I have some training set, you know, denote by this box here of uh, XY pairs, right? So, you know, X1, Y1, uh, down to my 400 examples, XM, YM. So that's my training set with 400 training examples. In the MapReduce idea, what I'm going to do is split this training set into different subsets. And um, I'm going to assume for this example that I have four computers or four machines to run in parallel on my training set, which is why I'm splitting this into four machines. If you have 10 machines or 100 machines, then you would you know, split your training set into 10 pieces or 100 pieces or what have you. And what the first of my four machines is going to do, say, is use just the first one quarter of my training set. So we use just uh, the, the first 100 training examples. And in particular, what it's going to do is look at the summation and compute that summation for just the first 100 training examples. So let me write that out. I'm, compute, I'm going to compute the variable temp1, the superscript 1 denotes as the first machine, j equals sum from i equals 1 through 100. And then I'm going to plug in you know, exactly that term there. So I have uh, h theta xi minus yi times xij, right? So that's just uh, that gradient descent term up there. And then similarly, I'm going to take the second quarter of my data and send it to my second machine. And my second machine will use training examples 101 through 200 and you know, compute a similar variable, so the temp 2j, which is the same sum but indexed from examples 101 through 200. And similarly, machines 3 and 4 will use the third quarter and the fourth quarter uh, of my training set. So now, each machine has to sum over 100 instead of over 400 examples, and so it has to do only a quarter of the work, and thus presumably it could do it about four times as fast. Finally, after all these machines have done this work, I'm going to take these temp variables and 
put them back together. So I'm going to take these variables and send them all to a you know centralized master server. And uh, what the master server will do is combine these results together. And in particular, it will update uh, my parameter state of j according to state of j gets updated as state of j minus uh, the learning rate alpha times one over four hundred times temp one j plus temp two j plus temp three j plus temp four j and of course uh, we have to do this separately for j equals zero you know up to and within this number of features so sorry about breaking this equation into multiple lines but I hope it's clear so what this is what this equation is what is doing is exactly the same as that when you have a centralized master server that takes the results the 101j 102j 103j 104j and adds them up and so of course the sum of these four things right that's just the sum of this plus the sum of this plus the sum of this plus the sum of that and those four things just add up to be equal to this sum that we were originally computing in batch gradient descent and then we have the alpha times 1 of 400, alpha times 1 of 400 and thus this is exactly equivalent to the batch gradient descent algorithm only instead of needing to sum over all 400 training examples on just one machine we can instead divide up the workload on four machines so here's what the general picture of the uh, map reduce technique looks like. We have some training sets, and if we want to parallelize across four machines, we're gonna take the training set and split it, you know, equally, or split it as evenly as we can into four subsets. Then we're gonna take the four subsets of the training data and send them to four different computers. And each of the four computers can compute a summation over just one quarter of the training set. And then finally, it takes each of the computers takes the results, sends them to a centralized server, which then combines the results together. So on the previous slide, in that example, the bulk of the work in gradient descent was computing the sum from i equals 1 to 400 of something. So more generally, sum from i equals 1 to m of that you know, formula for gradient descent. And now, because each of the four computers can do just a quarter of the work, um, potentially you can get up to a 4x speed up. In particular, if there were no uh, network latencies and no cost of the network communication to send the data back and forth, you can potentially get up to a 4x speed up. Uh, of course, in practice, because of um, network latencies, the overhead of uh, combining the results afterwards and other factors, in practice you get a slightly less than a 4x speed up. But nonetheless, this sort of MapReduce approach does offer us a way to process much larger data sets than is possible using a single computer. If you're thinking of applying MapReduce to some learning algorithm in order to speed this up by parallelizing the com computation over different computers, the key question to ask yourself is, uh, can your learning algorithm be expressed as a summation over the training set? And it turns out that many learning algorithms can actually be expressed as computing sums of functions over the training set. And uh, the computational expense of running them on large data sets is because they need to sum over a very large training set. So whenever your learning algorithm can be expressed as a sum over the training set, or whenever the bulk of the work of a learning algorithm can be expressed as a sum over the training set, then MapReduce might be a good candidate for scaling your learning algorithms to very, very big data sets. Let's just look at one more example. Let's say that we want to use one of the advanced optimization algorithms, so things like you know, LPFGS, conjugate gradients, and so on. And let's say we want to train a logistic regression learning algorithm. For that, we need to compute two main quantities. One is for the advanced optimization algorithms, like you know, uh, LPFGS and conjugate gradient, we need to provide it a routine to compute the cost function of the optimization objective. And so for logistic regression, you remember that the cost function has this sort of sum over the training set again. And so if you're parallelizing over uh, 10 machines, you would split up the training set onto 10 machines and have each of the 10 machines compute the sum of this quantity over just one tenth of the training data. 
Then the other thing that the advanced optimization algorithms need is a routine to compute these partial derivative terms. And once again, these derivative terms for rigidity regression can be expressed as a sum over the training set. And so once again, similar to our earlier example, you would have each machine compute that summation over just some small fraction of your training data. And uh, finally, having computed all of these things, they could then send their results to a centralized server, which can then add up the uh, local, add up the partial sums. This corresponds to adding up those, you know, temp i or the uh, temp um, i j variables, which were computed locally on machine number i. And so the centralized server can sum these things up and get the overall um, cost function and get the overall partial derivative term, which you can then pass to the advanced optimization algorithm. So more broadly, by taking other learning algorithms and expressing them in a sort of summation form, or by expressing them in terms of computing sums of functions over the training set, you can use the MapReduce technique to parallelize other learning algorithms as well and scale them to very large training sets. Finally, as one last comment, so far I've been discussing MapReduce algorithms as uh, allowing you to parallelize over multiple computers, so maybe multiple computers in a computer cluster or over multiple computers in a data center. It turns out that sometimes even if you have just a single computer, MapReduce can also be applicable. In particular, on many single computers now, you can have multiple processing cores. You can have multiple CPUs, or, and within each CPU, you can have multiple pro cores. And so if you have a large training set, what you can do if, say, you have a computer with four cores, with four computing cores, what you can do is even on a single computer, you can split the training set into multiple pieces and send the training set to different cores within a single box, like within a single desktop computer, or within a single server and uh, use MapReduce this way to divvy up the workload. Each of the cores can then carry out the sum over, say, one quarter of your training set, and then they can take their partial sums and you know, combine them uh, in order to get the summation over the entire training set. The advantage of thinking about MapReduce this way as parallelizing over cores within a single machine rather than parallelizing across multiple machines is that uh, this way you don't have to worry about network latency because all the communication, all the sending of the temp j variables back and forth, all that happens within a single machine. And so network latency becomes much less of an issue compared to if you were using this to parallelize over different computers within a data center. Finally, one last caveat on parallelizing within a multi-core machine. Depending on the details of your implementation, if you have a multi-core machine and if you have certain numerical linear algebra libraries, it turns out that there's some numerical linear algebra libraries that can automatically parallelize their uh, linear algebra operations across multiple cores within the machine. So if you're fortunate enough to be using one of those numerical linear algebra libraries, and certainly this does not apply to every single library, but if you're using one of those libraries, and if you have a very good vectorized implementation of a learning algorithm, sometimes you can just implement your standard learning algorithm in a vectorized fashion and not worry about parallelization, and your numerical linear algebra library could take care of some of it for you so that you don't need to implement MapReduce. But uh, for other learning problems, taking advantage of this sort of MapReduce implementation, or finding a, using this MapReduce formalism to parallelize across cores explicitly yourself might be a good idea as well and could let you speed up your learning algorithm. In this video, we talked about the MapReduce approach to parallelizing machine learning by taking your data and spreading them across maybe many computers in the data center. Although uh, these ideas are applicable to parallelizing across multiple cores within a single computer as well. And uh, today there are some good open source implementations of MapReduce. So uh, there are many users of an open source system called Hadoop. And uh, using either your own implementation or using you know, someone else's open source implementation, you can use these ideas to parallelize learning algorithms and get them to run on much larger data sets than is possible using just a single machine.